Collective decisions are central to human societies. It affects a wide range of systems, from small-scale ones like families and committees, to large-scale ones like democratic elections and international organizations. Furthermore, many of the most pressing challenges facing humanity, such as addressing climate change and mitigating global pandemics, rely on large-scale collective decision-making. Essential concern in these collective decision-making systems is the role of social learners. Social learners are individuals who adopt the belief or behavior of others instead of evaluating the options on their own. There are quality studies that have found effect uh, in all directions. Some find them help collective decision-making, some find them hurt, and some argue they depend on a wide array of other factors. My research team and I think these conflicting findings exist because collective decision-making are outcomes of complex interactions of many social and psychological factors. The overarching goal of our paper is to provide a general yet simple mathematical framework that enable us to integrate many psychological and social factors into study at once. Now let's take a look at the model that we have developed. We consider options X and Y compete for followers in a group. We can think of X and Y as, for example, two election candidates or people's decision on behavior such as smoking or not smoking. This group is consisted of two types of individuals, social learners and individual learners. Individual learners are those who evaluate the merit of options on their own by seeking out information and evaluating them against their own values and preferences. Social learners base their belief or behavior based on the belief or behavior of others. Now let's take a look at how we have framed this issue mathematically. We consider that among individual learners, uh, some favor option X and some favor option Y. The proportion of each is denoted as X and Y minus X. Those individual learners can shift between the two options with transition probability going from Y to X as PYX and the vice versa as PXY. From this picture, we can write down a conservation equation as the following. It says on the left-hand side, the rate of change of individuals favoring option X equals the right-hand side, which is the rate at which individuals coming into option X from option Y minus the individuals leaving option X into option Y. We have the same picture for social learners and the same conservation equation. The only difference is that the sub and superscript I for the first equation is changed into S, which denotes the variables for social learners instead of individual learners. The remaining of the model is to figure out these four transition rates then we can solve for the behavior of the system. The transition rate for individual learners is defined as follows. The probability of an individual transitioning from option Y into option X has to do what we call the merit of option X relative to Y. That is when an individual considers all information available to them, how likely they are to favor one option than another. Merit is a number between zero and one, where 0.5 means the two options has equal merit. By symmetry, the transition rate from X to Y should be one minus M. For social learners, their transition rates depends on conformity. Here we define function F of X to be the likelihood of adopting a behavior or belief as a function of the observed frequency of this behavior or belief in the population. Empirical research found that there are two types of conformity. One is called normative conformity, the other informational conformity. Normative conformity has to do with fitting into a group. For example, one decides what to wear to fit in with their classmates. Informational conformity has to do with wanting to discover the best option, such as one wants to find what's the best song to listen to on the internet. These two types of conformities are associated with different shapes of conformity response, and one is associated with S-shape, the other uh, the inverse S-shape. We have written down a functional form for f of x, parameterized by one shape parameter, varying which can allow us to recover both types of conformities. 
Now we have the transition rates for both individual and social learners. We plug them back into the conservation equations and we saw for the fixed points of the system. A fixed point is when the system stops changing over time for both social and individual learners. The fixed point can be either stable or unstable. A stable fixed point means that when the system is perturbed away from this point, it will return to this point. An unstable fixed point means that when the system is perturbed away, it will drift away from this fixed point to something else. So these unstable fixed points are unlikely to be seen in the real world. The variable we're most interested in in this paper is the proportion of individuals favoring option X in the whole group, regardless of whether they are a social or individual learner. On this plot, I am showing the proportion of people favoring option X as a function of the proportion of social learners. This is for the case when options X and Y has equal merit. When the proportion of social learners is below a critical threshold, the group is at a 50-50 split. This is as expected because X and Y are of equal merits. However, as the proportion of social learners exceeds this critical threshold, the majority will favor either option depending on initial conditions and fluctuations. In the picture on the right, I am showing a case where X has slightly higher merit than Y at 0.6. Similarly, when the proportion of social learners is under a critical threshold, the system will stay on the upper branch, meaning the majority will favor the high merit option X. However, when this critical threshold is crossed, either high or low merit options can prevail. A remaining question is where is this critical transition point? And some solutions are shown in this plot. The critical transition point depends on two variables, we can see that as alpha increases, that is when social learners respond more nonlinearly to the observed frequency of belief or behavior, the critical threshold for the proportion of social learners will decrease. And similarly, when the merit of the two options are closer to a 50-50 split, the critical threshold also decreases. In the picture on the right, I am showing that in the bistable region, what happens if the merit of the options M changes slowly over time? If M increases slowly over time, the proportion of people favoring option X will first increase slowly on the lower branch until it hits the first critical transition point, then it will jump up to the upper branch. If M is to be reversed, the system will first travel on the upper branch until it hits the second transition point, then it can jump suddenly to the lower branch. So the system is history dependent. In the mathematical model that I presented above, it made a number of simplifying assumptions to reduce the mathematical complexity. We have further studied a number of extensions of our model that includes more realistic considerations, and we have found that our major results remain unchanged. These considerations include thinking about individuals on a spectrum of social to individual learning rather than in a dichotomy of social or individual learning. Additionally, we considered individuals placed spatially and social learners are only affected by their neighbors. We have also considered the inclusion of noise. To wrap up, in this paper, we have presented a general yet simple mathematical framework. We think a general framework like this can help reconcile the conflicting findings in the literature by characterizing different findings as outcomes of different parameter regimes of the same general model. Further, our model is analytically tractable, that it allows us to draw certain conclusions without specifying specific forms of some input functions. In our paper, we have illustrated with example without assuming the precise functional form of the conformity response function, and we still predict bistable state. Lastly, our model offers a flexible mathematical framework that can be readily extended and adapted to include a number of other cognitive and social factors. In our paper, we have illustrated with example where we included committed minorities, those people who stubbornly hold on to their opinions, uh, as an illustration of this point. I hope our work is one step towards 
synthesizing parallel efforts in different disciplines so that we can have a holistic understanding of collective decision-making.